So guys, once we then in the NVIDIA control panel, first of all, click on the just image settings with preview and make sure that we actually utilize use advanced 3D image settings and click on the tag me there. Don't put it here on the performance guys, because then it's going to override all of these settings, which you can actually apply in your manage 3D settings section. Once we're in here now, guys, we have a bunch of features. First of all, image scaling, you could use it theoretically. For those of you who don't know what it is, you can basically play on 720p and it's gonna AI upscale it to 1080p or whatever you're playing on. But it's not working flawlessly, so therefore keep it on off. Any sort of anti-strophic filtering or anti -aligning except gamma correction guys I have completely on off or application control gamma correction is the only useful one because it's actually lightning in the game itself guys so therefore keep it on on then we're going to scroll down a little bit more until we can see background application maximum frame rate this is kind of an interesting setting let's just say as an example that you maybe have discord or google chrome running in the background you can actually limit it to something like 20 fps so therefore if you're trying to squeeze out better performance while maybe listening to music you know google chrome actually takes a ton of your ram you could maybe try this out for yourself but for me personally it doesn't make too much sense CUDA GPUs only only actually makes sense if you have multiple GPUs. For me, it's right now you're only RTX 4090. If you have maybe integrated graphics in your PC, like Vega 7 graphics, and then additionally on top another GPU, then it only makes sense that you have to select the one which you want to use so that you can actually make sure to select the one which you want to prioritize. DSR factors is basically a smoothing mode, which is again working with upscaling. So therefore, just let me keep it on off, guys. Always make sure to utilize those modes which are actually always available in the game directly. They are way better optimized. Then we're gonna scroll down a little bit more until we can see the low latency mode, guys. And this this one you actually have to put on either on or ultra so many pros from so many esports sports are arguing still which one feels the best if it's on or ultra for me guys i gotta say actually that ultra feels the best so therefore i always have it on ultra this is super important guys make sure that you enable this one in addition to that as well in mw3 the reflex low latency mode then for the maximum frame rate this only makes sense if you have overheating issues with your pc or better said thermal throttling you know after some time maybe your pc is getting way too hot and therefore it's actually putting down your fps in order to actually counter high temperatures so let's just say as an example if you can run an average of like 200 fps but you have a 144 hertz monitor i would actually recommend you to cap your fps on something like 160 to maybe something like 180 so it doesn't always spike up to these highs which is only going to give you thermal throttling but if you have no issues with that keep it of course on the highest one for the least amount of input delay and yes it also makes a difference even if you're playing on 60 hertz if your fps are as high as possible since the time between single pictures or fps is still going to be decreased the next up we have multi-frame sampled aa this one we're gonna keep on off OpenGL GDI compatibility on auto the same with the rendering GPU mode and then power management mode this one guys you gotta put all the way to prefer maximum performance this is super important since we want to squeeze out the best performance out of our system preferred refresh rate guys of course we gotta put to the highest available as well for me it's right now Azoi XL 2566k which means 360 hertz and no matter what it says in the game directly guys you always want to force your monitor actually to display the highest refresh rate then shader cache size this one is super important guys make sure to put it actually to 10 gigs because let me tell you something let me explain you something. Shader cache files are basically there to optimize loading time between maps, games, and all of that stuff, character models in the game directly, and they're getting created by every single game specifically. But sometimes they might be corrupted after maybe like a new game update, so therefore you want to make sure that they actually get cleaned once in a while. So therefore 10 gigs is the sweet spot. As extra tip, you can also search up here, delete temporary files, then go in here, temporary files. There you can see now your direct shader cache. Yeah, you can make sure that it's actually selected and just simply remove those files. They will then get regenerated if you start the game again and you chill in. The next up guys, we have texture filtering and dystrophic sample optimization. Again, a quite heavy graphics feature, so therefore I'm gonna put it to all. Texture filtering, LED bias on allowed. Texture filtering quality, we're not gonna keep on quality guys, but actually high performance. Since again, this is a comp guide, so therefore, especially if you wanna try hard an MW3 or the new Warzone, you wanna get as high FPS as possible guys. We don't really care how the game looks like. Let's keep it honest there. I'm gonna assume most of you anyways are playing on like 1440p since it's a really sweet spot for Warzone. So therefore, just simply upscale your resolution and you're gonna be chilling. Then texture filtering, Trillion optimization you're gonna keep on on guys this will basically help you with pre-loading textures before you even hop into the actual game or once you load it in so therefore make sure this one is on on then threaded optimization on auto triple buffering on off vertical sync only makes actually a difference guys if you're playing on 60 or 75 hertz anything above make sure that it's always turned off on 60 and 75 hertz as mentioned it can sometimes help you if your picture just simply doesn't look smooth at all and then virtual reality pre-render frames and Vulkan OpenGL we don't really care about just simply leave it on the default ones and click apply then once we're done with this so guys we're still not done yet we have to go under change resolution and please make sure guys that you're not under ultra hd i see so many people who select this one here and they're like oh yeah i can't select actually the highest refresh rate well bro you gotta scroll down here a little bit until you can find the normal pc resolution which for me is 1920 by 1080 and then select the highest hertz for you the next up you're gonna go under adjust the sub color settings this is only a personal tip from me guys actually i always put my digital vibrance all the way up to 75 percent so that my game is actually a little bit more colorful and has higher contrast so it's easier to spot enemies then we also additionally to that 
it gonna go here under video where you can see now adjust video color settings and in here gonna go with the Nvidia settings selected and put your saturation as well all the way up to 75%. This is going to make your Call of Duty look amazing guys so therefore yeah there's some gameplay here in the background you can see everything is super saturated and colorful let me just I'm gonna click apply again click under OK and then we already good to go. As mentioned make sure to check out this one my previous guide where I show you the best in-game settings and additional steps to boost the FPS.